So the holidays have come and gone, and no matter how you choose to celebrate that, more than a few of you probably ended up with one of these inexpensive turntables. Um, it's very similar models to this are sold by Crosley and a number of other companies. They're all built around the same cheap plastic turntable. They all have the same red ceramic Chuodenshi cartridge, and they're all identical mechanically. So you've probably also read some of the reviews online and found that these are almost universally mocked. Uh, today we're going to take a look at them and answer the question, are they worth upgrading? I hate gatekeeping in any form, so I'm not here to drag you for owning one of these things. I'm hopefully going to welcome you to this hobby and show you how you can get the most out of even an inexpensive turntable like this. Now, what do audiophiles, gourmets, and Stradivari violin experts all have in common? They are routinely and predictably humiliated by double-blind testing. So the first question we have to answer is, can you actually hear well enough to hear whether or not this is damaging your records? So I'm providing a link in the description down below to a hearing test, which is very humbling for everyone that takes it. So I would advise the first thing you do is go there try out the hearing test and see how you do. Now, one of the criticisms leveled at these turntables is that they destroy your records. That's not true, strictly speaking. Um, now, while the tracking force on this is about three times what you would want to see on a higher quality moving magnetic cartridge, it's still within factory specs for modern high quality vinyl and that particular stylus. Is that going to wear your records out faster? Yes, technically, but it's going to take hundreds of hours and it's going to be a measurable difference, not a noticeable difference. The fact of the matter is most of us do not hear well enough to hear the frequencies that are going to be affected by this heavier tracking force. So while I wouldn't recommend using one of these for your everyday player, especially for valuable records, for just casual listening, it is not going to destroy your records if you take care of them. That's a myth. I think there's a couple of sources of misinformation here. One is the you know usual retinue of internet experts, but the second is uh, older folks that collected vinyl back in the 70s and 80s. So if you know your history, you're familiar with the OPEC oil crisis and the recession of the 70s, that meant that vinyl was lower quality. Vinyl records are made out of crude oil, and as crude oil was ridiculously expensive in those days, it meant that the vinyl records available were of lower quality, and yes, they did wear out faster. A lot of them were actually shipped with defects, and that's part of where this urban myth comes up. So long story short, the vinyl that we are pressing records out of now is of a much higher quality than it was in the 70s and 80s, so there's less of a worry that you're going to wear out your records on even on something like this. Now, can you upgrade a turntable like this? Kind of. I mean, there's a limit on what you're going to be able to do here, and there's a hard limit on your return on investment as well. Like, these are built to a price point, just like they were in the 1970s and 1980s. These are aimed at kids, teenagers, people that don't want to spend a lot of money on a home stereo system. So there's a ceiling. You are going to hit the law of diminishing returns very quickly here. That said, I think that there are a couple of things that we can do here to improve this that are well worth the money. Now, I've set up a binaural recording system with two shotgun mics to give you a bit of an idea what this thing sounds like. And midway through the test, I actually end up putting a tea towel underneath this because the reflections off a hard surface like a desk or shelf, anywhere you're likely to actually put this thing to listen to it, are absolutely terrible. This is test number one, stock.
So stock out of the package, I think that sounds pretty terrible. Uh, it's very treble focused, very upper mids focused. You're getting some really harsh reflections off the surface that the record player's placed on. And uh, the frequency response is really, really narrow. Uh, it sounds kind of like the soundtrack to an old silent movie if it was recorded really badly, or like an old crank gramophone, maybe a, an Edison phone or something like that. Uh, really quite underwhelming. Uh, out of the box, I have Fisher-Price record players that sound a lot better than this one. So the next thing we're going to have to do is change out the cartridge and the stylus for the Bampa, and uh, we'll see how that changes the sound. So the first thing that I would recommend would be changing out the stylus on this thing. There's one made by a company called Banpa, B-A-N-P-A. -A. Um, it's also a ceramic cartridge, but it's a much higher quality one with a flip type stylus. The Banpa cartridge costs about as much as a new double album. So I think that that's worth the money. I think that that's a, a wise investment for this. It's going to improve the sound quality and it's going to reduce wear and tear on your albums. Now changing out one of these cartridges is not terribly difficult. Uh, there's a little clip in the front and it hinges out at the back. You just drop it down. You are going to have to deal with these four connections. I use tweezers for this. They are a little bit fiddly. Uh, there are two for each stereo channel, so pay attention to the way that you hook these up to the new cartridge to make sure everything works. Once you've got everything hooked back up, the new cartridge clips back into place in exactly the same way the old one did. The back goes in first and then you lift the nose up until it clicks into place. All right, this is test number two with the Banpa cartridge installed. So the Bampa cartridge is a huge improvement. I think that sounds much better. Uh, it's a little bit quieter, but you're getting a much wider frequency range. You're hearing more of the music, more of the instruments. I think it's a lot more natural sounding. It still doesn't sound great, but it's much, much better than the, the stock cartridge. So as a general rule of thumb, changing out the stylus is going to improve any of these turntables, even the Crosley Suitcase players. But what can we do to affect this specific turntable? This specific turntable has a pair of downward firing speakers on the bottom and a built-in amplifier. And it sounds absolutely terrible. Now you could always use the RCA outs on the back to run into a separate amplifier. But realistically, if you're buying one of these, you don't have a separate amplifier or you'd have a better turntable. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this up to a set of external speakers. Now, absolutely any set of speakers is going to be an improvement over what's in here. So I went to the thrift store and got the absolute dirt cheapest speakers I could find. I think I paid under $7 for both of them. They're Sony speakers from a component stereo system. So I'm going to wire that up to this thing using the internal amplifier that's already in there and show you what a difference better speakers make. In my parts bin, I happen to have a number of these uh, speaker wire terminals for various projects. I think these were under a dollar each on Amazon. And what I'm planning on doing is installing one of these guys surface mount on the back here. So I'm going to bypass the internal speakers and I'm going to go straight out to this little clamp terminal. From there, I can hook up whatever speakers I like. Um, the lower the impedance, the external speakers, the better this is going to work. This is designed to drive into four ohms. The only speakers I could find locally were six ohms, but as you'll see, they sound just fine. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. If I was going to be really fancy about this, I would actually mill out a slot in here with my router. But again, in keeping with the scope of this particular project, I think I'm probably just gonna drill four holes and surface mount this thing. <clears throat> I'll probably stick it right there. 
But uh, for the time being, I'm just going to very quickly bodge these speakers on here just to give you a little idea of how they sound and then we'll take this down to the workshop. So with that cartridge changed out and the external speakers as ugly as they are, that actually sounds like a turntable. Like you're getting a decent frequency response, bass all the way through the mids up into the treble. And it is just a much more pleasant listening experience. It, it actually sounds like music now as opposed to, you know, a bad silent movie soundtrack. So was this worth it ultimately? In a word, yes. I think that for the outlay, which pre-pandemic prices was $14 with free shipping for the cartridge and seven bucks for the speakers, yeah, it was well worth it. It turned something that was basically a child's novelty into something that's starting to sound like an actual turntable, something that I wouldn't be at all hesitant to listen to some of my listener grade records on. Uh, interesting little aside though, while I was at the thrift store buying these speakers, I happened to notice one of these. Now, this is one that I purchased previously and have done some work on. It's going to be reviewed in an upcoming video. Now, this is a design aesthetic that I'm not particularly fond of, but it does fit in better with these early 2000s speakers. But uh, in absolutely every way, this is a better turntable than the one that I've just showed you. Uh, it's a belt drive, it has a moving magnetic cartridge, the tracking force can be lowered down to like a gram and a half, and it actually sounds pretty good. Like, it's plasticky, but much, much better than that. And I think I paid $20 for this, so that will be featured in an upcoming video, but it's just something to keep in mind that if you're willing to buy something used and put a little bit of work into it, there are much better turntables out there. 
So anyway, I hope that's helped a few of you out. I hope that's helped your vinyl collection sound better for longer. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit me up in the comment section below as always. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps the channel out and keeps me making videos. And uh, until next time, keep making cool stuff, keep listening to music, and I uh, hope to see you again.